Hello! Let's talk about significant figures. Any measurement always has a certain amount of inaccuracy in it. This uncertainty is given by significant figures. For example, if my measurement is 285, then this has three significant figures, which we say that 280 are accurate, but the five, the last digit in the measurement, has uh, the possibility of an error of plus minus one. There are certain rules that we follow when we find out the significant figures in a given measurement or when we are reporting our measurements. What are these rules? When are digits significant and when are they non-significant? I just tabulated them. All non-zero digits in a measurement are always significant. For example, if my reading is 285, then all the digits are non-zero and therefore they are all significant. 0 0.25 has one digit which is zero and these two five are non-zero digits, therefore the two five will always be significant. The zeros which are preceding non-zero digits, they only indicate the position of the decimal. Look at this, this is 0 0.03. These zeros are only used to tell you that the 3 falls at the second place of decimal. So these zeros are not significant because they are not giving you a certain value. They are only telling you that the reading should fall at this place. Therefore, this reading has only one significant figure. Similarly, this one has 0 0.000, sorry, 0053. The three zeros are non-significant. Only the non-zero digits here are significant and therefore it has only two significant figures. The zeros that fall between two non-zero digits are always significant. What would be the reason for this? See, if I have, if I'm carrying out a measurement and I, uh, let us say, I'm measuring something 101. The 101 means that the 100 are correct. The last digit may be 100 or it may be 102. The last digit may have an error, but the zero should be significant. So whenever you have zeros between two non-zero digits, it means they have been accurately measured and therefore they should also be significant even if their value is zero. So 2.005 should have four significant figures. Let's come here now. Uh, okay, the, the zeros to the right of decimal, they at the end, they should always be significant. If I, let us say I'm measuring something and I report my reading as one, uh, 0 0.100, I'm writing the, th the reading to the third place of decimal. It means I actually have measured up to that uh, place of decimal. I might have an error in the last digit. This might be zero, this might be uh, one, or it may be, um, this may be nine, nine. It could be one less or one more, but usually we say this should have three significant figures. When zeros, the reading ends in zeros, and these zeros are to the right of a decimal, then those zeros are significant. It means you have measured to that accuracy. On the other hand, if a reading ends in zeros, but there is no decimal in the measurement. For example, this thing happened 10,000 years ago. 10,000 years could be 10,001, it could be 10,020, it could be 10,200 also. So when it is ending in zeros, we it is a very approximate, we assume that it could be a very approximate reading. I'm not saying that it has to be, but usually when a number ends in zeros and there is no decimal place, then we will assume that the accuracy itself is only in hundreds. So the, if this one, 100, should have only one significant figure. I'm just taking this one example to explain that. 100.1 would mean that these zeros are between two non-zero digits and hence this one should have four uh, significant figures. These zeros should be significant. Whenever you have readings like this, like 100, it should be, it would be, Preferable to write such readings in scientific notation to 
uh, express how accurate your reading is. For example, if this was only 100 and I was these zeros were not significant, then in scientific notation, I would have written this as 1 into 10 to the power 2, which means that I'm only counting the 100. It could be 101, it could be 102, it could be, uh, it could be 110, it could be 120. Even the second digit is uncertain here in the 100. Or I, if I have calculated up to the next position also, then I would write 1.0 into 10 to the power 2, which means that the first and the second digits in that 100 both are significant. I'm very sure that they are right. So this would have two significant figures, but if I've counted something and I'm very, very sure that my third reading should also be zero, but it might have a margin of error of plus minus one, then I would express it as 1.00 into 10 to the power two, which would have three significant figures. Let us now come to calculations of readings which have significant figures, or how do we deal with them when we have to report our answer to a certain number of significant figures. Let us say there are three readings. One is 12.11, 18.0 and 1.012. When we find out the sum of these three, the numerical sum comes out to be 31.122, which is equal to, which according to significant figures, I can only report my answer to that accuracy of to that of the least accurate measurement. If I am finding the sum of measurements, one is less accurate and the others may be more accurate, but this one, this digit determines that whatever my answer is, we don't know what are the digits after this. If we don't know, obviously we are not accurate. Our accuracy is only up to here. So our answer cannot have more significant figures than this. So the answer would have only, if it is one place of decimal, then the answer should also have one place of decimal. So what do we do? We drop off the other digits. That is, we round off the answer. In multiplication and division also, we keep in mind that the least accurate measurement is the one which decides how many significant figures would the answer have. Now 2.5 into 1.25 numerically is 3.125. But in these two measurements, 2.5 has only two significant figures, while this has three. So my answer cannot have more than two significant figures. So if it cannot have more than two significant figures, I have to round off and I have to drop the two, five. So my answer will be 3.1. Do we just drop off the numbers or are there some rules? There are rules in rounding off. What are these rules? If the number which has to be dropped is greater than 5, then we have to increase the preceding number by 1. If the last digit is greater than 5, for example, 1.386, 6 has to be dropped. But 6 is greater than 5, therefore when I'm rounding off, I will increase one number, one digit here. So if this is 1.38, my answer or my uh, reported calculation would be 1.39 because in significant figures as it is the last one is uncertain so there is a scope of error of plus minus one if a digit has to be removed and that digit the one that has to be dropped is less than five then we do not change the preceding number for example 4.334 would be reported and four has to be dropped so the number would be 4.33 we do not increase or decrease the preceding number but if the digit is five then if the number before it is odd, we increase a number and make it even, but if it is even, we let it be. In other words, when the last digit is 5, we prefer to keep the answer an even number and not an odd number, because usually even numbers are easier in calculations. Okay, so these were significant figures. I hope you keep practicing and you keep returning to my channel, like them and subscribe to my channel and leave comments if you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer. Thanks for watching.